real quickly, next slide. Choices that strengthen our focus on God. How can we overcome um, this self-induced spiritual blindness? Grace-prompted believers who focus on God will choose to start godly habits. What's a godly habit? Romans 13, 14. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. Now look up. Remember I told you about my shirt? I chose to put it on in the closet this morning after I shaved and took my shower, after I had my quiet time, I got dressed. Did you know these habits that I'm going to go through before this class is over are just as real and vivid as your clothes in your drawer, your closet, or your suitcase, or wherever your clothes are? They're all conscious choices we have to make. Here we go. Next slide. Here are some simple personal choices to seek God daily. Number one, make a choice to read God's word before your social media or any online activities every morning. That choice reflects Christ's words that say, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Make a choice to read God's word. So you got to have a plan. You've got to know where you're going to go. I actually set my Bible on top of my charging computer so it reminds me what's first. And I read God's word. I start my day with the Lord. I seek first the kingdom of God. Choice number one. Okay. Choice number two. Make a plan to create intentional, an intentional place of solitude so you can not only read God's word, but avoid any distractions until you can prayerfully apply God's word, the lesson you found in your own life. Now, what's that? Look up. Do you see this? This is my journal I've held up all through this class. When I take my time with the Lord, I need to write down what I found, the lessons, the truths, the principles. That's why you need a little time. You need, it takes at least five minutes. That's the minimum to read a passage, to note something, and to pray. Five minutes? Is God worth only five minutes? So I tell you, you need at least 15 minutes or more. But look back at the slide. Avoid any distractions till you can prayerfully apply the lesson you found into your life. Remember I told you about the prayer that you write. This is the most vital part of each day's devotional time. Jesus called this in Matthew 4.4, 4, living by every word of God. So number two, make this plan. Get your stuff, your Bible, your notebook, and, and find a place where you can do that. Number three, decide you're going to start a new habit. And that habit is pray or meditate on a verse instead of listening to music. Some young people, I mean, every free moment, they're listening to music. And, and try 15 minutes a day while you're walking or driving or riding on public transit or something or on your bike. Why? This can transform our travel time into an altar of sacrifice to God. Many of us are all alone when we travel, except that someone else is there, often sitting right next to us. God, remember God with us, Emmanuel. He's waiting for us to talk to him. He's waiting for us to invite him into our day and just believe he tags around with us everywhere we go. So pray or meditate on a verse. In fact, that reminds me of this. Why not take the huge step of fasting from the ultimate distraction of media? How about getting a habit that you're going to skip one whole day of going online and of any social media as a fast to prove you're not controlled by anything? And instead, Use that time to memorize one verse to meditate on that feeds your soul. And that is this next picture. This is a picture of my phone. Why not take the ultimate challenge? Grab that most valuable space in your life, the back of your phone, and actually tape a verse on there. Pick one out, any verse, and start memorizing it. And then meditate on it. Next, number five. <laughs> I know these are getting a little painful for some of you. Uh, finally, ask the Lord if he's able to give you enough grace for you to have a no TV, no video, no gaming, no social media week or month. And see if you can study through entire books of the Bible. 
and start to systematically read through some of the great Christian classics with all the hours you gain from that fast. Why? Because God offers daily glimpses into heaven. Now look up. It's time for us to go. This is your portal. Kind of like Oculus, you know, or whatever VR thing, if you've ever used those. This is a portal to transport us directly in front of God. And when we open this book, we can hear him talking to us. This is the word of God. When you read the Bible, God speaks to me. Now, before you read it, you say, Lord, I want you to open my mind to it. So you invite him to speak. And he doesn't speak if you're not a Christian. You need the Holy Spirit inside. The Holy Spirit is the plug. It's the power source. But if you're saved, God offers you a glimpse into his word every day. Now, what happens if we don't? Well, I have that right here. Sanctification equals usefulness to God. Sanctification is what turns life into God or into gold. Why do we need gold? Because all of our lives are going through the fire. The next event for most of us is coming into the presence of Christ at the rapture. And we're going to be ushered right in front of his throne. And he's going to let us put into a basket all the time we had since we got saved. He's erased all the sins. And all that's left is all the choices we made that were not sinful. You can read about that in 1 Corinthians 3. It says, our life will be tried with fire. And the fire will test whether or not our life was gold, silver, and precious stones. That means doesn't burn. Or wood, hay, and stubble. That does burn. That's social media, gaming, you know, hanging out, just wasting time. What God wants us to do is make these personal choices to see him, our king, every day. To focus on our Father in heaven, who is holy and has redeemed us for a purpose.